with the Jamstack, it kind of came out of the idea that a lot of our sites traditionally were not performing really well. And so how can we sort of fix that? We went to this idea of static site generation to make the websites really, really highly scalable. And that worked really, really well. But when we made changes in something like a CMS, we had to trigger a build change to, to get that change to come through. And then that might have been a really long time. So people didn't really like that long build process. One site's got a little more complicated. And so I think we see a lot of frameworks that have kind of come out of that. So Next.js is one of the ones where it has really evolved quickly into being sort of, I think, one of the, the sort of best ways that you can get the best of both worlds with what we liked with old school web development and some of the things that really worked well there, some new techniques, as well as still having some of the ideas of what we got with the Jamstack. It's at version 14. It app, the app router is a new way of sort of building sites with Next.js. Um, some major changes if you're using the pages router before, and we'll look at a little bit of those. It's based on using React server components, which is really cool because those things, you know, only, only uh, output on the server, they generate the HTML for you and we deliver HTML, but not all that extra JavaScript. So that's a really good thing. There's new cache layers. And that's what I'm gonna be digging into specifically today and having instant on-demand revalidation. That's really, really important to solve that sort of issue of we want a really fast website, but we need to make a change when we have a change that we wanna make. And we need preview mode, which is one that a lot of people forget, um, but we can really easily add that on there. So caching 101, we've always been able to cache websites. We've always been able to do caching to solve problems. It kind of gets a bad rap because it can make your life difficult if you kind of add that on when you're having problems, but then how do we clear out that cache? And we might not know exactly how we need to do that. And if you're looking at sort of the uh, elements of a page that we might need to catch, uh, to cache, one might be the header, we might have a hero component, listing component, and the footer. So those are four different things that we can cache independently from each other so that, you know, if I have another page that needs that header, I could reuse that cache object. But then we can also cache the whole route itself, the actual page's output. That's sometimes called response caching. It's great if we can cache that on the web server, but it's also even better if we can cache it on the CDN. And hosting tools like Netlify and Vercel and even some other um, tools like what AWS and Azure has now for static web apps, they make that a lot easier to kind of connect the CDN together with um, whatever is delivering your uh, sort of acting as your web server. And then we want to be able to send that to the browser. And in theory, we should be able to cache it on the browser as well so that if the person's hitting the same site over again, that they don't have to pull down all of that HTML. In Next.js, what does this mean? Well, we want to be able to do all of those things in Next.js 14, but the cool thing is we want to be able to do this on-demand revalidation, and that's where the magic happens. Um, and we're going to dig into how we can do that right now. All of the code that we're going to be looking at today is on GitHub, uh, github.com slash agility slash next 14 caching. From agility, the experience we want to see is like, so when from is someone's going from a headless CMS, and if I'm a marketer right now, and I'm going in and I'm working on this, I've got, this is the sitemap that agility gives us, um, and these are the components that are on this layout. Let's look at, you know, one of these, one of these components. I'm going to go first off and just preview this thing. So we want to make sure we get preview mode that works. Okay. So when I preview it, it jumps over to here, initializes preview mode. And that means that if when I make changes here, you know, if I want to just maybe take away this word, I click save. I don't want to have to publish it every single time. I just want to either click preview again or, you know, ref, you know, just refresh this uh, and I can see that change come through. So let's now make a change. We want to be able to actually publish this change and not have to wait a long time for someone to see that in, in actual published mode. So let's go, we're going to basically click publish from the CMS and we shouldn't have to wait very long for that to kind of go through. So we we'll refresh this now and that change should come through. So the next request, boom, it's through. So let's just show what it looks like when caching is working, okay? So if I'm on this site, if I just click, uh, if you click into the network tab of your developer tools and you click on doc, that's gonna show you the actual, um, just like the page preview, click on, click on that request and let's look at the headers. Uh, this, this site's hosted on Vercel because Vercel has all the latest features implemented for the hosting of Next.js. And you should be seeing what's called a hit on the response headers. So if we expand response headers, we should be seeing uh, Vercel cache hit. So let's look at the code that made this happen. You'll notice we're using the app router, not the pages router. And let's dig into how we're actually doing some of this caching. So the way caching works with Next.js is through the fetch command. So if I look at my lib folder and how I'm accessing this, uh, the CMS content. So let's look at how we're building the header for this thing. So we need to essentially get a header content item 
that's stored in agility. So we're going to call the site header for that. We're going to call this to do it for us. Okay. So we have this a method called get content, get content list that gives us a named bit of content. And what the agility SDK is allowing us to do is update the fetch config to add the next JS tags in there that are the next JS property. So we can say what the tag is. Um, so we're going to name this with the tag name being essentially uh, the name of the content I'm getting and the locale that I'm getting it from. Okay. So this is going to work for pretty much every website that's there. And then we've got some configuration set up for how long we want to cache this thing. So we've done this for get content list or get named content. Get a content item is going to uh, set up a tag with that, um, that content using its content ID. Um, and then we can do that with the page and all the other things as well. So essentially, as we're building up our components, so that's as we're building up what that component needs. Um, and what's cool is in a React server component, it can get its own data fetching. So this is a just the rich text area component, um, which is just going to get a blob of text from the CMS. Um, it's async. This is an asynchronous component. And it's going to do its data access using that get content item method. It's pretty cool because it's a strongly typed method. So it's going to give me a piece of content of type rich text, which has a blob of string in it. And that's all it needs. And so I don't have to know in my component anything about hashing or anything like that because I've, I've created this wrapper method that will do it for me. Um, so now I can just actually just write React code. So as a front-end developer, my life doesn't really get that much harder as long as you're following the paradigm of caching that works. And what's cool is this is all going to be rendered on the server. Even though it's in React, it's not going to deliver any JavaScript to the browser that I didn't need to. If I do have a component that needs to do more interactivity, I can set that as a client component. I'll show you how to do that right now. So I've got this post listing folder where I have my server portion of the component that is actually going to call you know, get post listing, um, which is going to get my list of posts. So it does that on the server for the first set of posts, blog posts. Um, and then what it does is it renders that using, it passes that as data to the post listing client component, which is then going to do more interactivity. Let's see what this actually looks like when we run it. So let's just go yarn dev. We're going to run this locally. So I'm going to be in development mode, which is um, sort of one of the three modes. So I have development mode. I could be in live mode or published mode. And I can be in preview mode. So let's let this page run. It's going to take a second to load because it's got to pull all that. That's not doing any caching whatsoever. Run our blog page. That has this listing listing component. So here's my first set of components. And this one's been hijacked a little bit because I only have three blog posts. But it's going to just do an infinite scroll kind of a thing on there that's in that client component. Let's look at how that works. So my post listing client, we've got this infinite scroll on here. And it's just calling fetch posts over and over again and, until it has more equals true. So what that's doing is it's actually calling into a, a serverless method inside the app folder under our API. So we've got this get post listing and lo and behold, it's actually using the same method called get post listing. Okay. And all of that, if we look at how post listing is working. It's using that get content list method that we wrote that is doing our tags. Okay. So all of that is working in here. So let's look at how we're going to clear out that cache. Cause that's one of the most important things, right? And it's a really simple endpoint. All it's going to do is take a revalidate request, which is essentially a webhook from Agility. So we've set this up to say, what are all the things that we could possibly get from a webhook from Agility that's going to tell us when something changes? So we're going to look at build the tags that could possibly for that content, if it was, if it was referenced by name or if it was referenced by ID and with its locale or language code. And what's awesome about how Next.js works is even though we're only revalidating the lower level data components, that will float up because Next.js keeps track of what path that is used. So even if I revalidate something on the header, which is on multiple pages across multiple layouts, I, it will still revalidate everywhere. So the way to test it locally is you do a build and then we're going to run yarn start. This allows us to run the exact same thing. I mean, I'm viewing publish mode. Okay, so you can see what this will kind of look like to make sure that it's going to work. Um, now, as far as I know, the on-demand revalidation, this stuff here only works with Vercel so far. So that's the easiest way to kind of test that out. So that's Next.js 14 with on-demand revalidation and caching and preview mode with CMS and all kinds of other stuff. Remember that repo is there. If you need it, you can always reach out to me uh, on all the available social channels and things like that. Um, thanks for listening today. I'm Joel Vardy and have a great day.